Yes, yes, yes. What is welcome back to the small talk with your host, as Dalgleish and Sean Clare. Sean, a few words. Very special guest, our first guest today, Mr. Jazza, the COVID kid. <laughs> the COVID kid. <laughs> Thanks. How, have I've, you recovered yet? It didn't affect me. I shook it off in, in 35 minutes. It was easy. <laughs> ran up Everton Hills. Yeah. Good tash, good November tash. Yeah, I like that. Disgusting, isn't it? You're not going to keep up the fight, are you? Well, the goal is if I can raise £5,000 for the charity, the Sisters of Mercy, I will keep it on for the fight. And the fight's on another, uh, the 2nd of December. So if we hit the target, which I hope we don't, I'll keep it on. Wow. Sky Sports with that tash. Imagine that was. <laughs> Jeez. So then, Jazza, a small talk. I know you've promoted it a bit on social media and you've heard a lot about, you obviously know me and Sean quite well. We've been VIP to your, to your fights. You've been at the world stage. Uh, How do you feel about being on small talk? <laughs> I was always the smallest, yeah, in school, so I'm with you on this one, boys, yeah? I'm with you. I remember. <laughs> if you're looking for an extra an extra roast, I'm your man. <laughs> so uh, talk to us about the fight coming up. Three weeks, is it now? Yeah, it's three weeks on Wednesday. Yeah, good luck doing good. It's been a bit, uh, bit bit of a mad time because getting put off and all that too. To having the COVID, the fight got cancelled, got got set back for for a few weeks. Um, that was all up in the air. We have to stay focused and stay ready. But you know, don't you suppose when when you're um, caught between, you know, when you don't know what's going on, and you've got to stay focused. It's a challenging time, isn't it? But it's always rewarding when you when you do stay focused. Mm, definitely. I know when I went, I, I think the first lockdown, I was meant to play a tournament in Spain. And then I was travelling back from training. And then we had like an idea that COVID was around, but then um, uh, my coach rang me and said, oh, it looks like it's just been cancelled three days before we were meant to fly out. So, and then that was when we all got sent home from Sheffield, and then we just trained on Zoom for frigging four months and a bit. So, wow. Have you just got anything coming up now yourselves? No, so everything for me has been cancelled, not even scheduled. I've, I've not heard nothing about no scheduling or comps or nothing like that. So, I've just took all the gym back home now. So, I'm in the Kasochi again. So, my mum's fuming. Chris is a cancel. No dinner <laughs> table. <laughs> uh, yes, same here. It's been cancelled until the, the rest of the year. And then we'll hear about March. I think we go to Spain or Canada. But yeah, motivation needs to keep on there, doesn't it? I know. You've got to the choice, really. You know, boys, have we? we haven't got another choice, really. We've just got to stay mm. focused, haven't we? All the lads in the gym, no one's got a date as well. I feel feel for them. I'm I'm looking me. I'm one of the one of the very few who, who are able to fight right now. No, oh, definitely. So Jazz, talk us about the beginning. How did you get into boxing and stuff like that? Like like how did it all begin? Were you quite a fiery young lad on the school ground or what? Just fight yeah, mostly that's it. Like we like just fighting on the school, yeah, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> mostly fighting on the school, yeah, on the footy pitch. I mean, I'm used to um, boxing in the house. We wrestled me and my dad, and uh, for years that was our thing. We 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 play in the house fighting. So, yeah, I've always said to me, why don't you go down the gym, lad, and and, um, and box because you can you can you can have a go. So you you might as well. And I was playing football at the time. I love football, and um, I had a fight. I think it was <laughs> I think it was just like one too many. Do you know what I mean? And um, I ended up going to the boxing gym with my cousin after that. And after that, it first first night in the gym, I loved it. It's what I wanted to do. Not long after that, I swerved to football and carried on with the boxing. What was good about it is that, as I said before, I was always the smallest in the school. Now I weren't the smallest because boxing is a is a weight weight. Everyone's the same weight. I, I was I was big now, or I was at least equal. You know, funny that sound that. And then what, you turned pro quite early, didn't you? Was it eighteen when you turned pro? 18, yeah. So, so, so I always seen box, I always seen amateur boxing as like it was, it was just like a it was a, it was a way to turn professional. I have to do it, I have to learn me, me craft sort of thing, but it was always something that I wanted to do was turn professional. 
I've done really well on a on the amateur scene. Not going to um, being on the Great Britain team, like like your man there. So he's been um, at, at at the top. Really, there was not much more for me to do, and won the ABAs as a senior, and then turned professional as soon as I could. Jeez. And what would you say? You know, <laughs> you know, you transfer from prof- to professional boxing from amateur. What would you say are the biggest differences? Well, the gloves. The gloves, you can take an inch off the gloves and then you also wear the air guard, so you can take the inch off there. So the distance was like everyone was two inches further away, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, when you first feel a, a professional glove, it's different. Like, there's, there's not an inch. Sean's arms are two inches. I know. I, I, don't know. <laughs> I forget it with the head, mate. Get it with the head. Buff him up a bit. I've seen you on the bank, Sean. You know yeah, that terrible. One? Windmill he, Claire, they call me. He, 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 he got that look on, man. <laughs> <laughs> he got that look on, man. He don't want to know. He don't want to, I'm too big for him. Too big. Too big, too fast. Uh, so you mentioned about being small and that, and obviously, and then the weight category happening. So what um, what weight did you fight again? Featherweight? Featherweight? Um, yeah, nine stone. What's nice. 57 kilogram? When I first asked, I was 34. 34 kilogram, man. I'm heavier than you. I'm, Jeez. My weight category is 59, okay? Fifty nine. Yeah. Jeez, I need to sort myself out. I'm good. forty. I'm forty eight, but my head's my head's about twenty. <laughs> so we're going to talk about setbacks, Jazz. Yes. So obviously, in professional sport, as you know, as we know, sorry, there's a lot of setbacks in the sport. So talk to me about like your first sort of setback and how you dealt with that, and who was there to support you, and if people were then and weren't there when you lost or whatever. Yeah, as a professional or as an amateur. Uh, both tell us all about like the first time you realised, oh God, it's a hard sport. Yeah, well, it's, I don't know. Like, as you know, it's, it's from the off. And the setbacks just happen from the off. You come with the ups. It's just a continuous cycle, isn't it? Up, down, up, down, up, down. But I think if you're going in, this, on, in that way, you're, you're doing all right, you know what I mean? Getting back up after every setback. But yeah, it's from the off. I, I realised that, that, that it weren't just going to be all fun and when you're talking about people who weren't going to be around and stuff like that, as an amateur and as as a professional, I've always had good people around me. I've never kept like uh, I've never kept bellends around me, you know. <laughs> so I always I always uh, was lucky every time I did lands on my ass. I had good people around me to to pick me up, and I've never really pay. What did you realise when you lose as a professional? Is that you don't. Yeah, the people aren't around anymore, but you you don't take that personal because that's what you signed up for. It's more about like um, I realised that when people are going to support you, you're full of gratitude and you can't understand at the start why are they come to support me. But then you realise later on down the line they're all there for a night out. Do you know what I mean? They're all pissed. Yeah. Not even watching the fight. Do you know what I mean? And you just don't think that you think they give they like um, they've cancelled the family. Parties just to come and see you fight, you know what I mean? But when you realize they're not even watching the fight, they're, they're there to, to look at the birds and they're there to, to get off the cake. They're at the bar after that. Yeah, that's where the bar. <laughs> yeah. But you're not, you know, who's there, don't you? Do you know who's come to support? Yeah. You do know, you just know, don't you? Like, you know, support yeah. you. It's one of them, like, as well, like, say if you've been away for such a, a long time or you've been in camp um, and you've not spoken to your friends or your family for a long time, but you know. You, the, the ones that are close to you, you can only you can just ring them like say if you're not spoken a month or two months, then the, the relationship with them is just the same as speaking to them every day, and that's what I think yeah. is is massive. People, yeah, you don't ask your two friendships too easy. You don't ask a question, yeah. and you know they, 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 they don't think you're an asshole or or a scumbag for not getting in touch. You just know you're busy, don't yeah. you? Busy, <laughs> busy, too, busy vibing, two stepping. Ooh. So what? Um, so when you fought for world title, what was tell us a bit about that? Like, because it was against with, with Gondo, Is that how you say his name? Yeah. And no one wants, no one wanted to fight him, did they? So and you stepped up to the plate, big jazz. Jeez. Yeah, no, no, no one will fight him, would he? For, for years he couldn't get a fight. Um, no. Not 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 a well level fight. He was Craig and Frampton around his weight. Um, they they was uh, <laughs> they would not go nowhere near him. Uh, no one would really. And uh, I, I think when, when I got offered offered the fight, I was the British champion at the time, and I was I was fighting for the European title in two weeks, and um, 
to say, would you, me, me manager phoned me and said, would you like to fight for the world title against Rogondo? But it was something I'd always imagined as the law of attraction. I don't know if you follow the law of attraction, but this was also always something that the only thing I didn't attract about it was the outcome. <laughs> yeah. So, so, <laughs> I got a broken jaw in, in round two and um, the fight, the, the corner man pulled me out of the fight. Um, but but looking back, I was a, I was a bit young, do you know what I mean? There was just no way I was going to say no to to a fight like that. There's not, there's just no way I went on, went on to say yes to my first world title fight because I never believed that. Like um, even if the, the worst does happen, I know that you can always come back from a loss. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people think that your career is finished if you lose as a professional, but I just think that's entirely on your perspective of of a loss. Yeah, definitely. And then I don't know whether it's for Sean, but for me. When I do lose, I think about, all right, all right, I've lost, but then tomorrow's a new day. I think about the fundamentals of life. Um, I've not crashed into a, into a, another car, then another tournament will come, and it's just one of them. You pick yourself up. And then, what you know, after you lost, what was the first thing you did after that? I had to have six months out of the ring because you had the broken jaw. So ah, that, yeah. was a, that was a tough time. But as you say, like you, you, you have a look around, so you, and you, 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 you go in yourself really, you introvert, and you start to think about, about life, and, and at the point, I just, I, I had three kids now, and, and I went, I wouldn't say I was giving me all to my family, in a way that I was just a workaholic and didn't know how to do anything else because it's always done, always what well, I've done since I've been a child, and with that six months out, knowing that I had six months out. Yeah. You know, but it, it put me in a in a position where I said I can actually enjoy my family, I can be a dad, I can relax and be a partner. Sometimes it's hard, lads, in it when you when you're trying to get it so much and you're trying to win, 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 win. And you just don't look at what's around you, do you or your family and you take a back seat because because you can be very selfish. So that 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 was the positive that came out of it. It's that I realised how to how to be a proper dad and a proper partner. No, what you said about I'm the worst loser ever, still to this day, but I've had to, I'm the worst loser ever. And like, like you say, when you lose, you realize how much family means to you because they don't care if you win or lose. Really. They also want you to do well in that, but that does not define who you are as a person, the way what you do in sport. And, you know, like you say, like, you know, you spend more time with your kids and your missus, and that's what it's about, really, isn't it? That's what you do it for to help for their future, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, back in back when my my first my first loss as a professional, I, I was suicidal after it. <laughs> Honestly, I was I can I was having them thoughts and we went on holiday, me and me lad and me bed, we went away, and um, yeah, I was we should have should have been having a nice time as you would think that we were in a nice place on a nice holiday, and I was just having suicidal thoughts because I couldn't I could couldn't come to terms with losing and the shame of it and and all them things. But one of the things I got out of that was like. We, you were saying then, Sean, about these people, they don't care if you win or lose, and I really gathered a lot of trust in my partner because I've seen like it doesn't matter if 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 I win or lose in that situation, and it went long after that. I asked the I asked the she marry me and got engaged and st- stuff like that. So you get a lot of these a lot of, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of positives come out of this, don't you? No, definitely. So how did you bounce back in the ring from that? You know, obviously. Was it help from the support of your family to get yourself back driven and train hard and get ready for another fight? Or yeah, well, it's always come better every time I've lost. I've always um, ended up achieving what I lost for. So like, I came back and I won a British title for the first time when I lost the first fight was a British title fight. I come back and I won that. Then the second fight um, I lost was a world title fight, and then the British title again. So since then I've. I've come back and I'm now ranked number two in the world and I'm WBO and IBF European title. So it's only for the world title now that I need to win. So I feel like um, I've corrected everything that I need to do. And, I, and most importantly, I've become a better fighter after every loss, as you know, lads. <laughs> you have to get better, don't you? You can't just keep losing and just losing. And you have to get better, don't you? Yeah. And the thing, you, uh, for me... I learned so much as well in, in 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 when I'm on court and outside the court. Like even if you're winning, you, you win, win, win. You, you think of your one tunnel in life, but then if you, if you if you lose, then you think about all the ways and perspectives on how you. And it made me it made me become a better athlete on and off the court. Like you, you, you realize that your coaches do do love you 
if you do lose as well, and then it just becomes a better coach athlete relationship with with them. You're all right to learn from it, aren't you? You can accept that, but I do have a strong belief it's not okay to lose. I still I still believe that. You know, I hate I hate losing. When you tell the kids in school, here's a here's a here's a medal for finishing seventh. I think oh fucking hell. <laughs> what we've got to teach our kids. Oh, definitely. So Jazz, have you seen the top I'm wearing? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say that. <laughs> Fan bo- fanboy Sean over here. Love it. So, yeah. So, also, is you, have you got a ring nickname or is it just James Jazzy Dickens? I can't have one, can I? Because it'll be too long. So, they started calling me... J- the, the announcer just, just automatically shouted James Jazzy Dickens. and Because when you sign a professional contract, you can choose any name you want. Right, Okay. So I could have been absolutely anything. So I thought, no one knows me as James. I've been getting called Jazza for years. It's only it's only me auntie and my mum who call me James anyway. So I might as well call myself Jazza Dickens. That, that is actually my me, me professional name, Jazza. So the, I couldn't um, I couldn't be Sugar James Jazza Dickens. <laughs> James Jazza that'd Dickens. Be, I think that'd be my nickname, Sugar Sean Clare. That's a good yeah. nickname. What so Jose, se- Sexy Sean Clare. Sexy Sean. Um, That's for the ladies, that one. I don't know what I'd be. Isaac, the destroyer dad grief. Uh, I'll think about it, I'll think about it. So, question for you, Jazza. Obviously, small talk, we're, we're getting everyone involved, disabled people, athletes, para-athletes, we're getting ordinary people. When you first sh- first met Sean or myself, ringside VIP, <laughs> um, <laughs> what did you think about society in this country regarding disability and disability sport or... Uh, like for example, if you go out with Sean uh, to the shops and stuff, the first episode we spoke about how our mates get more wound up about it, but by people looking at us, what are your thoughts about society and disability in general? No, I I actually didn't have any. I don't I don't think there's enough awareness. I don't know if I did realise this, but one thing I thought I realised this from from meeting Sean is one how inspirational you guys are to so doing what you should do, because. I don't know if anyone has an excuse not to. It could be used on me. Use it actually doing these special things when when I met when I met Sean, he was telling me like the differences between a midget and a dwarf, and I always yeah. and, and like to me, I didn't understand that, but I don't think there's enough awareness on how you guys would feel. Do you know what I mean? So I don't think that. Um, we pay too much mind to it, but that can come across very, very disrespectful. I don't know if it can. I don't know, lads. To use, I don't think that there's enough, there's enough awareness about it. So I think that it's great that you should do what you should do because maybe people will understand. Uh, you know what? I don't know. People. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So just to touch on that, like obviously, I don't think we've mentioned it. Have we? Has it like midget? Is a term we don't like. We like we wouldn't like to use the fat and nah. So obviously, I, I don't know how it came about, but I must have told Jazza when I met him. He's he's kept that with him. Uh, the good thing when I met Jazza, I went in, we picked him up from the airport, and I just remember like he saw me as a person. Do you know what I mean? Like we got on straight away because you didn't look at me as like oh a dwarf or a different or, like you just spoke to me like a yeah, person. <laughs> yeah, so we, we just got on like that. So I think that I think that the way you approach. Like our friendship, I think everyone, if everyone took that approach with everything, would be a much better, much better world, I think. Definitely. definitely. Well, 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 is it not, is this not always the case, though, lads? Is, or is is that not always the case by what you're saying? I don't. Not really. Like, for example, let me, let me, let me, let me put a, an example to the situation. If I was, if I was, if I was walking to the street, on my own, and um, there was an ordinary person just walking to the shops. They, they they probably wouldn't think anything of it, and they'd walk past me. But if it, it was um if it was someone with their group of friends and I was on my own, then I think yeah. I think there'll be some some kind of something like attraction yeah. to me, and that, that they might put um the phone out and stuff. But then again, for example, if if it was my mates. If it was my mates and they were with me as well, they'd probably kick off, especially if it was like out at a busy place and stuff, because they don't want to see me. But obviously, my mates and Sean's mates, they see us like just a person. So it's one of them. And I think there should be, I think obviously as a country, I think we're quite far behind than people like from Spain or, or Germany, because 
and and and, re and also within like ordinary men like i went to like spain and germany you'll see a lot more emotion within spanish people and like other european people but i don't think you would see that in in the uk because i do think that people just they do think it's um there is they are getting judged if if they do say something about their own their own their own life and stuff well you know being who you are successful athletes mm -hmm. once you do get into a situation with people and then you start to explain and, and you get to know the person one thing getting to know the person and then when they you explain who you are and what you do does the perspective does the attitude change even more Oh, it's a good question. Very good question. Um, I don't know. Oh, I think my interviewing news. Your host is small. Um, I don't know. I think everyone's di everyone's different way they perceive like a person in general. I think, but um, I don't know. I think I've got a lot of good close mates because of the way I am. Because they're, they're overly protective of me, but they don't show it to me. But they, I know they are. If that makes sense, like. To do anything to look out for me because of the way I am, and that makes me appreciate them as as friends a bit more. Because mm. as we all know, we're all lads here. We've been young, silly lads. It's easy to go out and cause trouble and stuff like that. And and when I'm on a night, I hate going on nights out sometimes because my friends will literally will like will want to cause trouble if someone not want to, but if someone's looking at me and and laughing or whatever, they think they're protecting me by going having a scrap with him, but like I feel so guilty then because what happens if they get in trouble, what if they get hurt, do you know what I mean? It's all down to me being a dwarf just stood there yeah. with my pint, like, come on guys, I'm not getting yeah. involved. <laughs> so. I, think, I think as athletes as well, I think you might pro you probably experienced it. I think because we work so hard every day in and out of, of our sport, I think resilience as well just becomes higher at a higher level. I think if you was just like a, a, like just a person who's not really out 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 of the comfort zone, I think the resilience is obviously going to be a little bit lower. Bosh. Bosh. So we got we got I think just under ten minutes now to wrap it up. Just so. Under 10. so is there anything you want to ask us, Jazza? I know you've just asked us quite a bit to be fair, but is there any questions you want to ask us that you think would be beneficial? No, I think it's good. I think like the awareness is there anything that that the awareness about about this, what people don't know, do you know what I mean? Because I'd love to know more because I would never want to come across rude and people, I think people wouldn't wouldn't want to say anything rather than saying the wrong thing, you know? So what is there anything like that? Uh, I would suggest, I mean, I can't speak for all people with disabilities or dwarves, but, do you know, if you're with a child, especially, and ch children and young kids make, like, oh, mummy, look, there's a little man or whatever. I think yeah. for that parent, just come up to us and, and say, oh, my, my daughter and my son is curious, and what is it you got wrong? And, and then we can explain it how we want it. Yeah. it. Rather than... They'll, they like, feel it's wrong. Yeah, like, yeah. shut up and take them away. Like, don't punish I've, a child yeah. for being inquisitive. I've got one question for you, Jazza, before we all wrap this up. Um, people watching this, it could be 10 people. It could be, you know, you don't know with us. It could be me, mum and dad. Um. Any advice for people? Obviously, that obviously we're locked down 2.0. Any advice as a pro athlete? Um, how they get past these? The, obviously, we're seeing out the end of the year. How do you keep positive when you're not training? When you haven't got a fight coming up, or there's a little bit of rest? How, what 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 advice would you give to people that may not have anything to look forward to, or a little bit quiet in their life so far? I think definitely one thing is to be creative. Got to be creative because you get new channels and you haven't used to go down. If you can be creative, you can develop new new things. And definitely, definitely now we've got the time as athletes to focus on our weak points because sometimes we, we, we've got the next competition, we've got the next camp. So we have to we have to focus on, on our strengths to get better and better. But now is the time, which, which I've done in lockdown, was to focus on all my weaknesses. So I think definitely write down write down your goals, write down your weaknesses, and now you're going to work towards getting better as an athlete. Perfect, Amino. Thank you very much for coming on, Jazz, and I hope you not took too much of your time out of your camp. Thanks for having me on, lads. And I hope I can come back on when you're bigger than Joe Rogan. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. That's right, guys. Jazza Dickens against <laughs> Seven Iron Ryan. This <laughs> What day is it? What day is it? <laughs> It's on a Wednesday, funny enough. Jeez. 
a Wednesday yeah. night. Wednesday night under the lights. That's how MCK. we MCK. Wednesday night. Not used to fight. No, Wednesday, are we sure? No. I'm a Saturday fighting myself. <laughs> under, the, under the lights. Cheers, Jad. Good luck. Thank you very much, lads. All the best to you as well.